Ooh, welcome to Ghetto Trash, episode 313. Pale Fire by M.K. Reed and Feral Dalrymple. My name is Erk. I'm Jason. Hello. Hello, sir. <clears throat> Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you as well. Is this, our, this is our first post New Year's Eve show, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> there, were there, I mean, yeah. The listener will have heard at least one other episode before this, but... Uh, if they're a good listener. If they're a good listener, yeah. yeah. But uh, the, for us, this is, yeah, our first post New Year's show. So what do you think? 2016. It's going to be awesome. Uh, it's going to be the last year I'm going to be alive. Really? Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. If uh, uh, things that, don't... Did, uh, did you go to the tarot card reader? Again? <clears throat> yep. 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 <laughs> or did you just read a bunch of tarot comics? <laughs> That's what you figured out. I read a bunch <laughs> of tarot comics, and I said, why the fuck am I doing this? You should just kill yourself. This is what you have done. <laughs> You're like, ah, I've, read, I've read 115 of these things. <laughs> can you believe? I mean, like, that's awesome. It is. Yeah. But can you believe that? I know, right? <laughs> Honestly amazed every single time I see a new issue of that uh, book. Yeah, every time I'm, like, looking through previews and, like, I get to the Black Rose <laughs> section to fill it out, I'm just like, man, he is still doing that book. Yep. It's kind of like the Cerebus of softcore porn. It really is. <laughs> You know, I mean, good for him. Yeah, no, that's great. Right? Yeah. yeah, I hope he does a thousand more. <clears throat> and and uh, yeah, and I hope that that it certainly is is. I mean, he hasn't done anything else other than that, as far as I know. So it right. clearly is it's allowing him to have right. a living. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> right? Like it. It doesn't really look like something that I would get into. I have debated numerous times right? about. Should I pick this for the show I, at some point? I would not veto it. Right, it, it looks fun. Right. Well, that's the thing. Like I, like I kind of put out on the internet. Like, hey, I'm maybe thinking about doing tarot, like a trade for get a trash. Right. But like, is it bad enough to be good, or is it actually good? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the people that like it that come in my work. There's like a couple people that buy the other. Like, okay, for those of you who don't know, it's a book called Tarot. It's a very busty... Which of the Black Rose. Which of the Black Rose. Very, very busty uh, <laughs> character with a lot of busty <clears throat> side characters. Yeah. doing, And it's, like, kind of cartoony, It's, but it's drawn by Jim Ballant, who did Catwoman for years and years. Yep. And, and, like, he's a very good artist. Yeah, he's not bad. And and it's just, like, clearly something he loves to draw. Right. But it's not, like, well, so who, over the top. Who doesn't love to draw oh, yeah. giant tits? I, you know, I may have done that once or twice <laughs> today. Uh, um, no, but, yeah, it, it looks like he's having a lot of fun doing it, which right. makes it seem like you would have a lot of fun reading it. Like, sure. Even if it is, like, softcore porn comics? It pretty much is, yeah. I mean, it is, like, you sh- should also mention that uh, most of the busty characters in it you know, are either completely naked or wearing strings. Right. And I think maybe one of them is based on his wife. Yeah. So, uh, God, what's her name? I think, I think, I think her Mrs. Ballant. Is that her name? <laughs> I think her name is Holly Golightly. Oh, it might be. Yeah. yeah. Which is the breakfast tip from Yeah. 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 Which huh. was a Jeopardy answer the other day, and I was the only one in my parents' house that knew it. They're like, uh, they're like, the movie, or, or the, the book. Tarot, which is the Black Rose. <laughs> yeah, the Truman Capote book, who, <laughs> whose, uh, title is the same as Jim Ballant's wife's name. Uh, you know, there was a, a, uh, like years and years ago, I was watching Jeopardy, and there was a, uh, answer that, about it was like a superhero category, right. and that the answer was who is the flaming carrot? Not That's even awesome. joking. Yeah, because it said something about I think it said something about either his atomic powered pogo stick it was his, you know, <laughs> like. Uh, did, did anyone get it? I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> I honestly don't remember because I was so excited. I was like, "What the fuck?" You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, like when you see like a punk rock band on MTV or something. Right, right. And you're like, oh my god, my world is melding with the real world. Yep. I've, uh, I've seen recently, like, a lot of podcasts that uh, I've loved and, and listened to uh, as Jeopardy clues oh, or answers. Cool. Yeah. Like, Never Not Funny? Uh, 
uh, not never not funny, but thrilling adventure hour for sure. Nice. And I think super ego even. Oh wow, really? Yeah. That's weird. Uh, so yeah, that that is kind of cool when you see that. Yeah. My biggest Jeopardy disappointment in the world ever though was a couple of years ago, and I think it was the team tournament. Right. And I, like I don't know the exact wording of the the clue or whatever, but the answer was the Beastie Boys, and like the the wording of the clue was obviously the Beastie Boys. None of the kids got uh, it. They, I was like, they hadn't been watching any Star Trek movies lately. This generation is fucked, <laughs> right? It all comes back though in twenty twenty three or whatever. I guess whenever yeah, Star Trek takes place. <laughs> <laughs> Those kids just weren't cool. Nope. <laughs> they probably wouldn't have got the flaming carry either. Well, it's true. They were on Team Jeopardy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They probably knew a lot of math and science oh, yeah, and yeah. historical facts. Yep. You know, they've been groomed. We are ungroomed. That's <laughs> <laughs> very true. <laughs> <clears throat> so, Pale Fire. Yeah. Speaking of teens and yeah. kids. Oh, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this is a this is a book about some teenagers. Yes, it is. Not on Jeopardy. Nope, but in Jeopardy, perhaps. Yeah, and even in Jeopardy, in the most uh, lame way you could be in Jeopardy, I guess. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I mean, it, basically, it starts out uh, with this girl named Allison who wants to go to a, a party. Yeah. And she's having a conversation with her mother yep. about whether or not that's a good idea. Right. We've all been there. We've sure. all been teenage girls wanting to go to parties. Yep. Uh, I'm going to start off in saying that uh, I'm just going to go ahead and spoil this right off the bat. Okay. Spoilers ahead. Uh, I didn't like this book. Okay. Because I could not relate to it on any single level. Really? Whatsoever. Really? Because I never had an argument with my parents about going to parties. Because guess who didn't go to parties? <laughs> Your parents? That's right. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, I I could relate to this. Yeah. <laughs> um, not because I wanted to like go to a party to meet like a member of the opposite sex. I just wanted to go have a, a hang out with my nerdy friends and drink. Right. <clears throat> but yeah. I... I had similar similar confrontations over the years. Like just last night. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to leave the house. Mom said no. <laughs> she said, You don't know those boys. They may have been smoking the marijuana. <laughs> oh yeah. So, so does your mom know that you smoked marijuana? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. yeah. 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 And she, she still loves it. She doesn't care. Okay. Yeah, she doesn't care. <laughs> I mean, she probably wouldn't want me to smoke marijuana and then, like, drive around. Right. But, but yeah. Yeah, yeah she doesn't care. <laughs> I'm just curious. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but, yeah, so so no no relatable characters. No, nope. No, None whatsoever. No, wow. Nothing about this. I, I think maybe I could relate to the guy with no fingers. <laughs> Probably more than anything else. Because he's just hanging out, drinking, drinking a beer. Because he's just sad and alone. Dwayne, is that his name? Dwayne, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you could, I'm sure you you recognize characters from this. Oh, yes, absolutely. And yeah. they are all characters and, you know, that, that I recognize as people I never wanted to associate <laughs> right, with. Right, yeah. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> like Tom, the guy at the party that comes out and is just a real douchebag. Right. Because um, basically, Allison has a crush on a dude, yeah, and her mom has heard stories that this guy is maybe a little dangerous. Right, he's he's a little crazy, maybe. He has a little penchant for fire, indeed. A little pyromania, yeah. He's been and, listening to way too much Def Leppard. Yep, and also, you know, who doesn't have a little penchant for fire? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, fire's cool. It, it is. Yeah, you know, it's really neat. I mean, Beavis and Butthead were right. <laughs> Is all I'm saying. I see. I was thinking David Lynch, but you know, same thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I love both of those things actually. <laughs> Beavis and Butthead and David Lynch. <laughs> but so yeah, she shows up at the party and and the dude's there. Yep. And uh, and she's like kind of hanging out with him outside. They and then this this other dude Tom comes out and he's just being a real jerk. Right. Like kind of making fun of the fact that this dude loves fire. He's like, I think he says you're gay for fire. Yep. 
Which, which is very, you know, sounds like a teenager. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like very, the dialogue was pretty, pretty spot on as far as like capturing the kids. Right. The and kids. I will say, you know, like, I will say this, uh, definitely, at least to me, I, like, I didn't notice it at any place where, you know, cause, cause like you read or watch, you know, a lot of stuff where they're, you know, a mostly teen cast and, the dialogue is full of like really stupid slang that has to be made up that no kid would ever say right, in their right, mind. Right. Yeah, like this book has none of that. Yeah, there's not a, not a single one of those, yeah. which is cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I didn't even notice that, but now that you point that out, that is something that <laughs> would have taken away from it. Oh yeah, had it been there. Um, but yeah, well, she she goes to this party and uh, you know she's there to meet uh, Darren. Uh, and her mom eventually relents and lets her go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's her best friend's house. Holly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Holly also uh, is not particularly fond of, of Darren being there. Nobody uh, likes Darren. <clears throat> nobody likes Darren. How do you get invited? I don't know. Friend of a friend? Yeah, probably. I mean, That's how I usually get invited. Right. I mean, I guess I'm so low on the totem pole that uh, I couldn't even get invited <laughs> by the friend of a friend of a friend. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, uh... Holly informs Allison that there's also a couple of other dudes who are more normal, who uh, would be, you know... Better suitors. Better suitors, and then they're all interested, but uh, she finds flaws in all of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tom is one of them. Uh, And then there's... Because Tom is always high, I think. Yeah. She doesn't like like him. And he's short, I think. Yeah, he's he's short and high. Yeah. Honestly, she's right to uh, (laughs) not like him. (laughs) Well, not but be- yeah, yeah. He's just because he's an asshole. Well, that too. Not because he's short and high. Well, <laughs> the short thing. Uh, short people bother me. Short people <laughs> Everyone's shorter than you, <laughs> for the most part. Yeah. Everyone bothers you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's, why, that's why. That's why. one of my closest friends is Joe G because he's taller than me. Uh, is he really he's taller than you? Yeah, about an inch or two. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, he wears platforms, though. Well, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know what? However, you got to fake it. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so, Stilt Man is your favorite supervillain. <laughs> yep. <laughs> He's really hard to beat. I mean, like, you can't just climb up his legs like you would expect. Right. They're, they're like, really greased. Yep, right. Because yep. he thought of everything. He has. <laughs> <clears throat> can't beat him. Uh-huh. But no, yeah, uh, then I can't remember the other dude who's boring. Yeah, it's because he's boring. I yeah. I can't remember his name. That's true. Yeah, I don't remember his name either. Uh, but, but he has big ears and he doesn't really talk a lot. Right. Which, uh. He just says, like, cool. Right, yeah. And how's it going? And, and it was funny because when they introduced him and said them, I was like, that's pretty much me every time I've ever met a girl. Right. I'm like, hey. How's it going? It's pretty much me whenever I meet anyone. Right. Although sometimes I just won't ask how it's going because I don't care. Because <laughs> they're shorter than you. Well, because they're short and you're a stranger. Right. Stranger danger. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah. My mom taught me never to touch strangers. It's the one thing that has always uh, <laughs> you know, kept her. <laughs> it's good to have life lessons that yeah. ring, ring true into adulthood. <laughs> uh, and then there's Paul. Who is, uh, I don't know. You know, Tom's an asshole, but just reading Paul's dialogue, I thought he was kind of a bigger asshole. Really? Yeah. He's at least more obnoxious. He's, he's a very opinionated and like, uh, outgoing. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I kind of liked, I kind of liked him. Yeah. He seemed like somebody I would have hung out with in high school. Yeah. He seems like someone I probably would have been forced to hang out with in high school. <laughs> right. Uh,. But, yeah, but but she doesn't care about any of those three guys. She wants the, the bad, pyromaniac. The bad boy. Yep. Yep. Uh, and we're introduced to him and in sort of a weird way. Like, she's in the middle of a conversation with another friend. And oh, yeah, uh, he just, like, sneaks into the friend. Right, yeah, and, like, pulls out a cigarette and just kind of says, hey, and, like, they ignore him for, like, four panels. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think it was him. I was like, oh, was, there's some other guy. Right, some creeper know. dude. But it turns out it was... It was the dude. Who's also a creeper dude. Yeah, yeah, he's kind of a creeper dude. He's really into fire. Yeah. And he's really into Allison. He thinks she's cute. Yep. Which is cool, right? Because she likes him, he likes her. Sure. Yeah. It's always uh it's always good when you when you know 
I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That there's a, a mutual attraction. Uh, so they make it outside. Yeah, they do. Uh, he's he's going to smoke, and, and that's where the, the confrontation with Tom comes in. He's a real dick. He's a real dick, yeah. And uh, there's like a, a little fight, which Darren clearly wins. Yeah, yeah he's much bigger. <laughs> yeah. And less high. Right. And, you know, just a little quicker. Yeah. yeah. Because he doesn't even throw a punch or anything. He just kind of... Like, Pushes him down, yeah. Yeah, just sort of lets him, his own momentum take him down. Right. And then they decide that uh, they're going to leave. Yeah, yeah. Darren and Allison just say, fuck this party. Yep. Which is usually my attitude towards uh, parties right. as well. Yeah. So, okay. So I could relate to that. See, there you go. Yeah. You found something. <laughs> <laughs> and, but that's kind of when it takes a turn, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, because Darren just like in the car, he's like, well, just, he's got his rage built up. Yeah, at that point, right. Or... His, his adrenaline's flowing, and he's like all pissed off and like shouting obscenities about everybody there. And yeah. you can tell Allison's a little creeped out. Like, oh, maybe there's. She's like, let's not talk about school because right. She's trying to steer the conversation away from something Things that will make him angry. Right, right. And, uh, and then that's why we we run into the uh, the best character in the book. Dwayne. Uh, Dwayne, yeah. uh, who we learn earlier is actually Darren's brother, who uh, all the rumors of him being a pyromaniac pretty much start from that. And uh, he blew up Dwayne's hand. Yeah, with, with fire- fireworks. fireworks. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Dwayne is like, he he runs a gas station, and yeah. uh, or he works there, right? And uh, he lets he lets. Uh, um, Darren takes some free gas. Yep. And free snacks and drinks and mm-hmm. whatever else. You know, I, I would... I don't know. If my brother blew up my hand, I don't know that I'd be so open to letting him do a lot of it was, whatever. It was years ago. Yeah, They're buddies. Still, yeah. The blood runs deep. I guess so. I mean, if your brother, like, you know, cut off your fingers. Going back to the previous episode mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, right? <laughs> I would probably still be alright with him. Well, yeah. okay, yeah. alright. Well, you're also much closer to your brother than I am to mine, uh, so. Uh, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, you work with him now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's he's awesome. Yeah. Uh, we just don't see each other as often as, yeah. as we probably could. But, yeah, yeah he's a good, good fellow. He's yeah. a good fellow. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Mm-hmm. What if I cut off your fingers? Uh, I'd never talk to you again. Uh, that's yeah. fair enough, too. <laughs> well, if you cut off my fingers when we were, like, six, uh-huh. I would talk to you. But okay. if, like, you talk, cut off my fingers now, right. I probably would stop talking to <laughs> you. <laughs> I mean, maybe when we're 60, I would bury the hatchet. Sure. Yeah. All right. Well, that's something to look forward to. Yeah. I mean, I will be dead long before <laughs> then, though. Well, yeah, because... Cause this is your. This is my last, is year. last year, and yes. also even if it isn't, uh, I am so unhealthy that uh, it really, I, I don't have that much longer anyway. Oh, I hope that's not true. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and so so D- 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 Darren, Darren, Darren grabs a bunch of stuff from the gas station, which uh, including like a little gas can full of gas. Yep. You're like, okay, he's not just putting gas in the car. He's yeah. He has a container full of gasoline. Yeah, that's it's usually a bad sign. Especially when you're like, this guy's a known pyromaniac. Exactly, yeah. And you're like, okay. So it's it's creepy. Like, yeah. all of a sudden, the story is kind of creepy. You're like, oh, uh-oh. Yeah. Because it's nighttime. He's driving around around with Allison. Right. She, they're, they're, she's 16. Uh, he's got a can of gasoline. Yep. And you're like, oh, that's not good. No. Uh, and, and it should be mentioned, this place... There it takes place in like a, a really really small town, like it's it's the kind of place that has like one of those old timey gas stations. Yeah, it looks like kind of the south. Kind yeah, of looks like Tennessee or something. You know, it's uh, it's like yeah, they're not like just at a BP or a Speedway or anything. Right. They, they are at a. It's like a dirt you know, country, like a country kind of right. highway and yeah. a, a gas station on the side. Lots of trees everywhere. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so they drive out to a field, and then, uh, Darren just abandons her <laughs> as he walks off with his canister full of gas. Well, he takes her, it's a, it's not just any field, though. He said this, this was his grandparents' farm, and they, oh, had, okay. they had to sell it. So it was like, kind of like, he's like, this is a meaningful place. Right. So okay. it's like, uh, maybe something, maybe something nice, right. maybe, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Or maybe he wants to kill his girlfriend 
where his grandparents used to live. Sure. Because he said, he's like, yeah, he's like, I used to wander. Right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, uh, he's like, I used to wander around in this forest all the time. I know this place really well. So like, so all of a sudden you're like, okay, he, he has this advantage because they're in this dark woods and he knows this place really well. Right. And she does not. So that's another kind of creepy thing too. Once he says that. I should, I don't know. I feel weird at this point. Like spoiling it? Yeah, because... There's not much else we can do. Exactly, because yeah. this is a very short comic. Yeah, it's a 64-page comic. That is a double-sized anniversary issue of a normal <laughs> monthly comic. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and I believe this one has far less dialogue than any one of those would have. Right. So yeah. it, it is... So we're almost at the end here. And pretty yeah. much, <laughs> yeah. Um, do you want us to spoil it? If you don't, <laughs> just speak up. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and spoil it. <laughs> okay, I guess we're okay to spoil it. Right, I didn't okay. hear anything. Yeah, no, me neither. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so he, he leaves Allison alone with the car, and, and it's kind of a nice, quiet moment. Like, as the reader, I felt a little like like maybe I was more worried than she should be. Right. Like, like I was as worried as she should be, but she didn't seem as worried as I am. Right. Yeah. She's, like, looking at fireflies and smiling. <clears throat> and, right. And you're like, this dude is... Setting your death trap up. Right. Yeah. Like, all the clues are there for, you know, potential death trap. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, see, she, yeah, if I, if it was me in that position, I, I don't think I would have been so content to just sit there. Right. Uh, but I guess when you're smitten with someone, you know, you maybe don't uh, see the flaws as, as clearly. And, and teenagers make bad decisions. Well, sure, that too. Yeah. Uh, hey, guess what, teenagers? It never changes. You'll always make bad decisions. <laughs> you just are more aware of the bad decisions right. you're about to make. Right. <laughs> and, 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 and then run into more legal ramifications thereafter. Yep. <laughs> uh, so he finally comes back after she notices, uh, like a weird smell. Yeah. And, uh,. He takes her out to the middle of the field, and uh, he wants to show her something, and he... He says he's bad with words. Right. Like like a lot of us nerds. Sure, yeah. Uh, I mean, clearly, you've been listening to us for 313-plus right. episodes. Right. Um, and so, the f- he, he lights a match. And then he has this crazy look in his eyes. Yeah, oh, yeah. And I think at that moment, you realize he's... He's more smitten with the fire than he is with Allison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he basically, I feel like, is using her as a reason... To set a fire. To set a fire. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, but, yeah, he, he has uh, poured the gasoline into, uh, you know, into the field, and it uh, when he lights it, it forms a, a giant heart with her name in the middle, and there are fireworks going off. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Just like the ones that probably destroyed Dwayne's hand. Probably, Yeah. So you find out that I mean they don't say, but I'm, I'm guessing that rumor is true that yeah, that's how yeah. his hand was blown up. Yep. And yeah, and and Darren just kind of looks maniacal. He's like charged up and he's alive, and because yep. he's kind of he's kind of like sluggish before. He's kind of like, hey, you know, right. Other than when he was like all angry in the car, but right. but he's like charged up and crazy looking. <laughs> then uh, we we see uh, that the there's uh, cops or or fire coming, you know. Uh, fireman, and uh, so he uh, he doesn't panic, but you know he's just like, okay, I've done this, I know what's happening next. Right. Well, let's get the fuck out. And, and well, and we forgot he he grabs her and like kisses her first. Oh, well, that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which like I think it was because he was so like into it, into yeah. the fire. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think it was he was like aroused by the fire. Right. And she doesn't necessarily fight him off, but she also doesn't necessarily seem to be into it. Yeah, she's kind of yeah. kind of like surprised and like, right. yeah, that was maybe not the right moment. And right. Yeah. Plus, she's probably kind of creeped out by, like, yeah, like, like this is not even like their first date. They're just kind of like, oh yeah, at yeah. this party, and he's already like got this giant tongue, heart, with right, a, yeah. a giant heart of fire, and right, tongue right. in her mouth. Yep. Uh, so, so yeah, so the cops are coming and he, uh, says we gotta get the hell out of here and forcibly grabs her to, uh, take her back to the car, but she kind of fights back at that moment. Mm -hmm. And he basically, I don't know if she falls or he pushes her down. I think, 
I think she like kind of pulls away a little bit, and she stumbles on one of those rocks because yeah. there's like some rocks around the the fire. But then uh, her hair catches on fire, and uh, she she manages to snuff it out. And by the time she recovers, he's long gone. Oh yeah, he's out of there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then, uh, but then Paul from earlier comes in. The likable asshole. The uh, mostly just an asshole. <laughs> yeah. there he is. Uh, he's, he's a moral asshole. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. He's like a character on a TV show that's like constantly whining and complaining and bitching, but you're still rooting for him, sort of. I was never rooting for him. Really? He is just an asshole. (laughs) But he is at least an asshole that, (sighs) he's me, kind (laughs) of. Complains a lot about everyone around him. Uh, well, see, I root for you. Yeah, you shouldn't. <laughs> you should not. You and Paul. You and Paul. <clears throat> uh, but he, yeah, he, uh, although, you know, to be fair, that is also a little creepy, what he does. Just kind of swoops in. Yeah, because that means he was following him. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, but I think it, he was following him because he was, he was concerned. He was, sure, but still. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, he was probably watching while they were kissing. And, right, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a little creepy when you think of all the details. But, <clears throat> but I think I think his heart was in the right place. Sure, yeah. And hey, you know what? Even uh, even Darren's heart was in the right place. It was in a field on fire. That's right, yeah. <laughs> That's the best place for it. <laughs> it's usually where my heart is. It's not a, f- a fire. A burning field, yeah. <laughs> uh, so he, he, yeah, he takes Allison and they skedaddle before the pigs show up. Yep. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and uh and he's and he's like we should what skedaddle or pigs okay <laughs> um but he's like he's like we should go get a burger and and he's like complaining about darren and like you know you feel like he's he's a nice guy he's like concerned right. about her yeah and uh he wants to you know wants to treat her to a, a nice milkshake and burger and, yeah and I think she finally realizes, you know, maybe, maybe this is the dude I should go on a date with. Sure. Yeah. Uh, she definitely at least realizes that Darren is not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think it's, yeah, pretty clear. Yeah. Yeah. He's an asshole. Yeah. And that is pretty much the end of this. Yeah. It really we is. spoiled the shit out of this book for you. <laughs> well, we warned you. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Um, cause again, it's really short. Yeah. Uh, so, so it was, it, 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 I think it would have been difficult for us to talk about it without talking about everything, really. And speaking of things to talk about, that Feral Del Rimple. He is, to this day, still amazing. And he's incredible. Yeah. Like, he, like, I remember the very first time I ever saw his artwork, uh, it was actually, I think around 1999 or 2000. Mm-hmm. And, uh, my, my friend Bruce and I at the time when we were working together and trying to make comics and, uh, we were looking to see, you know, how much it would cost to get stuff printed, you know, who to go through, whatever. Right. And, uh, he took it on himself to email and then write to a couple of different printers. And some of those, like, sent him back samples and said, hey, this is some of the stuff we've been working on and some of the stuff we printed recently and, like, you know, stuff of different quality and, and different, uh, you know, sizes and whatever. Right. And one of those samples was a book by Mr. Farrell Dalrymple. And it was printed on newsprint. Oh, wow. I love newsprint. And it was called, uh, Smith's, uh, Misadventures in the Super Mundane. Wow. I've never heard of that one. Uh, and it was amazing. And I was like, wow, this guy's great. And then I think shortly after that, uh, Pop Gun War? I remember Pop Gun War. Started, I believe. Yeah, it was like a little kid with angel wings yep, or something. Yep. Yeah. And then a guy with a top hat and yeah. carried a fish on a leash. You're right. Yeah. Yep. You can't forget stuff like that. No. And I think it was shortly after that where you and I went to space yeah. together. And he won the space prize. He did. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he was there. And that like was Dave Sim awarded him a prize. Yeah. 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 The Gene Day prize, I think. The it was. Gene Day prize, yeah. I think it's what it was back then. Yep. And, uh, but, you know, yeah, I talked to him, and then I bought some stuff from him at the time, and he had a a nicer reprint version of uh, Smith's uh, Adventures in the uh, Super Mundane. Right. So I bought that. And, did you uh, tell him about getting I did, yeah. yeah. 
And uh, I think he was there a couple of years yeah. in that space. And uh, I got a sketch from him once uh, before he... Uh, like, he was gaining popularity at the time. Yeah. But, you know, oh, and he deserves it. He's, oh, yeah. He's awesome. He is fantastic. He's got, like, this weird sketchy line, but it, he, he, he has, like, a super, super awesome style of, like, it's a good mix of cartoony and, and like... I want to say realism, but only in the the sense that body language is very oh, yeah. realistic. But like, it's cartoony, right? But it's it's like a cartoon version of realism. I don't know. No, I totally get what you're saying, and and honestly, like that is the type of realism that I enjoy in yeah, comics, right? Where like it's still exaggerated, and it's definitely in that artist's own style, right? But like you know, everything seems natural. I guess that's probably more what it should be called, naturalism, yeah, than realism. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah definitely. Because, I mean, you know, you can argue that, like... Brian Hitch is realistic. Right, yeah, or, or I was even going to go Greg Land. Right. You know, but when you look at their art, it's all very kind of stiff yeah. and, and posed and doesn't flow very well at times. Right. Uh, but, but, yeah, Dowerpool just has... I mean, I'm sure there's skill involved too, but it's just an uncanny ability to make everything flow oh, yeah. so well together. And and like the detail, like he doesn't overdo it. Like that scene where uh, Darren and Tom are kind of having their fisticuffs. Right. Like it's a nighttime outside shot, and you know you you see like shadows and things, but it's not like overdone. Right. It's just, like there's just enough detail that you know exactly what they're showing, what he's showing, and right. Yeah, he's just he's got a command of it. He's really good. I'll say, I think this is probably the most grounded story I've ever read by him. Yeah, it's usually... Because, again, you know, like, you know, previous stories I've read by him feature little boys with angel wings right. and top hat men with, you know, floating fish. <laughs> like Omega the Unknown. And I think he did that. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think this is the most, like, slice of life thing I've yeah. seen him do. Although I think, I think he did a series in the early 2000s with, I want to say, Judd Winnick. Which is about like Jewish gangsters. Oh, that sounds familiar. Yeah. Like a Vertigo book or something. Yeah. yeah. Man, what was that? I don't remember. Uh, that sounds familiar. Yeah. Are you familiar with M. K. Reed at all? I have never heard of M. K. Reed before. Yeah, I don't. This. I don't know if that's a male or female. <clears throat> I don't either. Um. Hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, I I don't know that I loved this book, but it certainly isn't due to any of the elements other than it's just a story that I can't relate to. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I, I like, I, I don't know if I would say like MK Reed is an awesome writer for, just from knowing this, but I think whoever that is, right. he or she, um, like, uh, the dialogue was really good. And I, th- I think the characters like, They're I pretty could, well-rounded. Yeah. I couldn't or, like, I didn't get any of them mixed up or anything like oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's very, it's yeah. very well done. And it's like a slice of life, just like, you know, you know people's dialogues. Style. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I think the the getting characters mixed up also helps with Feral Tower. Yeah. You know, so every good. character has a distinct look. Yeah. Even like Holly and Allison are both sixteen year old white girls with black hair. Right. But you know which yeah, ones which. Yeah. Right. And yeah. And yeah. You know, I mean, you know, that's just part of. It's like every character they they aren't a caricature. But, you know, they're also all distinct enough that they have their own looks. Yeah, to them. There's, a, there's a personality. They, they're kind of like, <clears throat> okay, this represents that person I knew in right, high school. Right, right, or yeah. that group of people who are all like this. Right, right. And Feral Daryl, but man, not only did does he draw great characters, but I could seriously... Like, if you put out a, a book that was like 700 pages of him drawing, like, kitchen furniture, right. I would buy that book. His, his, uh, the, the mom's kitchen at the very beginning is right. kind of amazing. There's like, uh, yeah, like every like little plug in, like electrical outlet and like cabinet, like, and like, you know, just like desks with flowers and things. Right. I mean, he's just so good at drawing background details. Yeah. And, like, and, I, you know, he, I'm sure you had reference or whatever, or at least, you know, drawn from. You know his own memories of, of experiences or whatever, but still to be able to to do that and and not make it look cluttered. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. Like there's all that detail, but it doesn't like 
it doesn't take away from anything. It's right. just it's just a very rich environment. Yeah. Yeah, he's 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 top notch. He is indeed. I, I definitely always look forward to seeing stuff he does, even if I haven't read anything from him other than this in years. Yeah. Because I know he's got a couple graphic novels out now that I haven't read yet. I think he's doing something in Island from Image, that yeah. anthology, I'm pretty sure. I'll avoid that for the most part. <laughs> uh, but, like, I think what he put up the Wrenchies yeah. uh, uh-huh. a couple, like a year ago yeah. or something like that. I kind of want to read that, but, you know, have not yet. I actually um, I, I have both of these. Okay. I had Wrenchies in this, and I almost picked the Wrenchies, but I was like, well, it's like, Ten times as thick. I was right. like, maybe we should just review the smaller one, you know. Yeah. But I've, yeah. If you ever want to pick it, I yeah. can loan it to you. All right, I may do that in the near future here. All right. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, I didn't hate this at all. You know, like, like it was fine for what it was. But like I said, I just had a hard time associating it. To, to any right. personal experiences. Yeah. Like, it's weird because obviously, like, I can't associate with, you know, Superman or anything like that, but. Well, I mean, you have your Fortress of Solitude. Well, I do. And your giant key that no one yeah. else can lift. Exactly. But, uh, you know, like, just, I think when you are presenting a very realistic story, mm. that, you know. You want something to. To something latch else to, to latch onto. Like at least when I go into a Superman comic, I know that well, I'm never going to be able to relate, to relate to this on a personal level. So I'll just enjoy it for what it is. Right. But with this, I was like, oh, well, these are all people I know and did not like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but it, but is there like a voyeuristic uh, quality to it where you're like, I can peer into their lives for a moment? No, I don't like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, another thing. Again, I also don't really care. This is published by Secret Acres, and it, uh, it's... Is it the place to be? <laughs> it is. Um, I love the way this book looks. Like, it's, it's kind of exactly what I want. I have, I have a, uh, like a comic story I've been, I like have written years ago, and I've just never drawn it. I've is sketched it, it out. Is uh, it Galaxy Fighters? No, it's not that one. Okay. Um, but this is like the exact format. I think like when I found this, I was like, this is exactly what I want that book to look like when really? it's done. Cause I was like, I don't want it to be a comic book, like a flimsy comic. And I don't want it to be a graphic novel. That's going to be like a hundred pages. Like it's a shorter story, but it's right. like, I don't know how to really, but like looking so, at this, I'm like, this is exactly what I want it to look so like. So basically you want the prestige format. It's like, of, yeah, uh, a killing joke or a, uh, yeah, a dark Knight returns or a pale fire. But, but it has like, there's like a width to this book. Like it's a little, a little lighter. Bit, yeah. Like I'm sure killing jokes, like at least standard. Comics, yeah. yeah. Like this one's a little, like maybe more like a golden age comic. Right. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. Perfect bound and it's pretty. No, yeah. no ads. No ads at all. It's all black and white prettiness. It's got nice paper on the inside. Yeah, and a beautiful color cover. It looks like color pencil, maybe. Yeah, I can't tell. Yeah. It's but, pretty cool. Uh, it's nice, and the design of the cover is also very uh, intriguing. Yeah. Because there's a lot of uh, negative space on there. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, with, with plenty of room on the back for uh, people to jerk these people off. <laughs> yeah, there's you know, there's a lot of a lot of comments on the back. Yeah, which... okay, there's only three, two. One of them from Brandon Graham, and honestly, that kind of immediately turned me off. But oh. uh, see, I, I like Brandon Graham. I do not. I I love his art, and I love his writing, yeah. and I love his face and his toenails. Sure. Uh, but no, no, you know, it's it's a perfectly fine book, and then I certainly wouldn't disparage anyone from reading it. Yeah, like you know, it's yeah. It is good for what it is, and what it is is not a thing that I could really get into. All right. I think I am going to look up MK Reed and see. Yeah, I'm at least be curious. A, at least if it's a man, woman, robot, or whatever it is. Sure. And uh, It doesn't really matter, though. It doesn't. Yeah, I, I, it doesn't. But I'm curious. <laughs> and I would, I would check out something else by, yeah, yeah, by that yeah, writer. I would, uh, like, if you picked another thing that they wrote, mm-hmm. you know, I certainly wouldn't, you know, immediately veto it or anything like that. I'd be like, yeah, let's see what else they got. Yeah. Especially if they work with someone like a Feral Dalrymple yeah, on a regular basis, or, right. or someone as good. You think I could get Feral Dalrymple to draw my 64-page comic? Maybe. Yeah? <laughs> I wonder what he would charge. Nah, it couldn't be much. All artists work for free. Uh, they usually do, yeah. They, I mean... I, I worked for... I did a, a two-page 
comic for somebody for Christmas, and right. I, and I did it for some Indian food. Sure, so, you yeah. know. Uh, I mean, and honestly, that is that is more than what normal artists would get because they're doing it for the exposure. Well, that's true. Yeah. yeah, it's an opportunity to get their work out there and be seen. Let's see. I think his work is out there. He's been published by Marvel and Image and DC. Sure, but you know, I mean, every little bit doesn't hurt. <laughs> Right, he's never been published by Bible Beware. Exactly, so, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, those yeah. three people haven't seen his work. Exactly, so exposure. That's that's what you'll uh, you'll uh, offer him. Okay, <clears throat> just the street cred. The street cred. Bring, bring it back down a little bit. He used to work for Meat House. Exactly. The kids. I mean, well, he was the the the, the one of the founders. One I think. of the founders. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. James Jean was there too. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yep. That guy, maybe he could get both. I mean, he could do the covers. Maybe bring it back down a little bit. I mean, yes. He's not doing comics work anymore. No. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just putting out fancy art books. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, working installations at Prada. Right. Yeah, that's bullshit. Uh, he needs to get back to his roots. Yeah, too. you gotta, you know, you gotta walk in the streets sometimes. <laughs> get off of your fucking high horses <laughs> and out of your million dollar. Oh. Mansion loft <laughs> I, houses. I was actually just looking at a James Jean art book a couple nights ago, and it's some of the best art that oh, yeah, any, any human has ever made. Fucking fantastic! Yeah. <laughs> uh, like I, I follow him on uh, Instagram, and I don't know if like he posts at least once a day, like you know, some piece of a uh, thing that he's working. Oh, on. really? <clears throat> and I don't know if it's all like you know, just small glimpses at like a larger thing that he's doing, but. That guy is kind of a machine at times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's incredible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a fine comic. Yeah. 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 Check it out if anyone has a copy of it. Yeah. We, there might be a copy at Mavericks. I might put it back on the shelf. Because it, it was cool, but I typically don't go back to comics anymore. Sure. Unless I have a nostalgia for them. Right. So, um Maybe in thirty years, I'll I'll want to read this again. Sure, sure. So I'll probably put it on the shelf of Mavericks. So you can you can read the very copy touched by us. Yeah, well, I'm gonna touch it again. Just we're touching measure. it right now. We're touching it. It's touching. There we it's go. being touched. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take a break and touch it some more? Sure. <laughs> the, we'll, the comic. The comic. We'll be back. <laughs> no, just touch the comic.
Sir, howdy. How's your how's your water? It's not water. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> is it whiskey? No. 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 Uh, it is. It is just Pepsi. Ah, oh, that's a choice of a new generation. It is. Hmm. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> so what's what's up? N- nothing. Yeah. Just living the dream. Twenty sixteen. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. This, the past two, three weeks for me have been the shittiest that they've been in, uh, since my breakup in the summer. Ah, I'm sorry. And, uh, yeah, kind of just either want to kill myself or kill everyone around me. So, mm-hmm. you know. It's unfortunate. Life choices. Yeah. That's unfortunate. But, you know, this will be a better year. It'll build up to good stuff. Probably not. <laughs> Uh, All right. Um, Yeah. (laughs) I guess we could talk about that. If you want to, go for it. I don't know. I mean, literally, I have nothing to say. Mm. (laughs) Well, um, I could could pick a movie. (laughs) Um. I don't know. There's probably other stuff we can talk about, man. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. There's other stuff we can talk about. I mean, uh, like, uh, what's been going on in the world other than Star Wars is happening? Star Wars is a thing that is currently going on. I saw it. Uh, oh, what? Did I tell you? No. Yeah, I saw it. I mean, you sent me a text, but you said you saw a Point Break. Well, I was just trying to be funny. I was like, I finally saw the movie. Yep, Point Break. Okay. I was just trying to be funny. Uh, okay. Failing. Thought you actually saw Point Break. I uh, I do want to see Point Break. I'm sure it's terrible, <laughs> but I like the original. I, I love the original, and I would just kind of like to see, you know, what happened here. <laughs> I'm sure it's not nearly as good. Well, I know that the robbers are definitely extreme sports enthusiasts, like yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, just like you. It's a line from the trailer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was hoping they would. I have found the script for Ballpoint Break online and <laughs> just on that stuff. Yeah, yeah, and like re reworked it and like sure. after they found that. But maybe make it a little more actiony. Yeah. Yeah, that could spruce it up. Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Hollywood. Hollywood, you know, because, I mean, you know, to be fair. There's know. there's fights in mine. Well yeah, yeah, but but you know, I mean, for the most part it is mostly just about people sitting around drawing. Right. That's pretty action packed. Right, yeah. That's what I do every Saturday. Well, same here. <laughs> Um, no, I, yeah, I legitimately love the movie Point Break and, and, uh, I kind of want to see the new one, even though I'm sure it, it it doesn't need to be remade, but I'm just curious. Right. I understand that. Uh, Yeah. I, uh, I have no love for the original Point Break. I think it's maybe one of the worst movies I've ever (laughs) sat through. Uh, and so clearly I have no love for a remake. (laughs) Like I would have a love for a remake if like, after it came out, everybody was like, this is the greatest thing I ever saw. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but it was mostly like, well, why they remake that? So it's not doing well. Oh, no, not at all. Well, I mean, it's, it's up against Star Wars. Well, yeah. there's that too. I mean, but even taking out the Star Wars factor, like, you know, it's, you know, nobody is saying anything yeah. positive about it. Like, it was no Star Wars. Right. <laughs> Like, weren't you the one that told me that, uh, like, there was a review that was like, it's this generation's point break. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, yep, that yeah. is a phrase that sums up what that movie it's is. It's kind of hard to deny. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah. But, you know, there's there's lots of other movies happening that uh, that uh, are all probably getting their asses kicked by Star Wars. Yeah, and like Django and Chain, or not, not Django, uh, <laughs> Hateful Eight. Well, Hateful Eight's got uh, other things going for it, such as uh, 
it's only open in like 20 cities right now. Yeah. And like you have to have like special theatrical equipment. Right. Yeah. In order to, to view it. So I, I would really like to see that. I would as well. I honestly, I haven't heard much good about it, mm-hmm. but I do still want to see it. So, and is Bruce Dern actually in it then? I believe so. Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, uh, his agent's the one that leaked the script yep. years ago and almost caused almost it to not. It, yeah. Right. yeah, I like Bruce Dern. I do as well. And then yeah, the the, the movie is full of people I enjoy, like mm-hmm. uh, Samuel L. Jackson, Kurt Russell, and five others. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that adds up. I think Walton Goggins is in it, I think. Who's that? He is, uh, uh, oh, fuck, why can't I think of his character's name? Uh, uh, uh Boyd Crowder from Justify. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. He was also in, uh, G.I. Joe, I believe. Is he, yeah, I like that guy. Yeah. Uh, he was also in Django Unchained. Yeah, okay. Um. Yeah. Christoph Waltz in it? I can't remember. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. There. Yeah. Oh well. Uh, but yeah. So you saw you saw the Star Wars. I did see it, and I I loved it. Did you? Yeah. And did you start thinking about it later and decided that you hated it? No. That, that is a, a thing that I keep seeing a lot too. I've I've had people try to tell me why it wasn't why you're good. Wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, eh. I just thought it was great. Yeah. You know. They're like, but but see, if this happened, then it's kind of weird that this happened. Uh, it, was a, it was a movie. I loved it. When those people are saying that stuff to you, is it all based around the fact that uh, the lady character is the hero of the movie? Uh, not that all. They are angry about that? I think I have heard some of that. Okay. But, but yeah, there's others too. Yeah, there's there's all kinds of angry nerds. Right. Or, the or, sexist or, nerds, the racist nerds. Right. The, just yeah, the how, n- how many people are complaining about uh, the, the black guy? I've, I've heard a couple of people, they're like, that's kind of weird, right? I'm like, why? Why is that weird? <laughs> oh, why is it? <laughs> so, other than outright racism about the and, character of Finn. Yeah. Uh, you know, and just that, you know... Hey, why is there a black guy in my movie? Kind of thing. Uh, to me, the other racist uh, aspect of that is everybody assumes that he's Lando's kid. Yeah, uh, he is could, he or not? He totally could be the Bespin Guards ca- uh, kid too. Right. Because yeah. because that's the other black guy in the Star Wars universe. Right, yeah. So why would you assume he'd be Lando's kid? Right. There's a, there's a, there's another black man in that universe. There has to be, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, uh, in the toy line, I think that they were seriously the only two black toys in the vintage run, but, right. but no, yeah, I, I have no idea why, why that's like, I mean, he was raised to be a stormtrooper. Right. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't see why you would automatically go there, you know, I don't know. I, uh, took a, a trip inside of a Walmart. Uh, about a week ago, and uh, this was like so right after Christmas, basically, and uh, went through the toy aisle, and most of the toys were just pretty much cleared out, so there was like not much left on the shelves at all, except for a whole lot of Finn. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Finn. Yeah. Well, I get what I I do get it because like if if I was buying a toy from this movie. I would probably go for the really cool looking bad guys. Sure. Or I would go for, uh, Ray, who is my favorite character in the movie, the, the female. Yeah. Um, so I mean, he would probably be the last one I would buy too. Sure. But, but mostly just because the other ones are cooler, not because he's uncool right, somehow right, right, right. or like unlikable because of his skin color. But, right, right. I mean, he was cool. He was a cool character, but I'd rather have a BB-8 or Ray or, you know, Kylo Ren or. I. You know, have have no interest in this movie for the most part. But I'd kind of like a BB-8. Yeah, <laughs> like an actual BB-8. Uh huh. Yeah. Not yeah, like of a course. toy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you told me something that blew my mind yesterday that <laughs> Bill Hader somehow was involved in the the voice of BB-8. Yep. Uh, Bill Hader and Ben Schwartz both provided the vocalizations for BB-8 in the movie. That's so weird. Yeah. Uh, I brought it up because you were talking about a, uh, 
a Star Wars parody or like something. A bad lip reading. That's yeah. That's or it. Bill Hader was involved. Yeah. Right. It was like, oh, well, seems like Bill Hader wouldn't bite the hand that feeds him. <laughs> you know, like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, like, oh, weird. He's in The Force Awakens. <laughs> that's weird, yeah. Uh, so was Daniel Craig. I, I know. Yeah, I heard about that. I, <laughs> that was one of the first spoilers I heard. Um, as Daniel Craig was a stormtrooper. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Did you see his face? No. No, no so he's no. just... He's just in the suit. Yeah. Well, then why the fuck does that even matter? <laughs> All right. I mean, it's like, you know, good for Daniel Craig. He was like, yeah, this will be fun for me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's cool. He must be, like, really into it. Right. Something. Well, I guess they were filming that, like, right next to the studio where they were filming, you know, the latest James Bond, so... You can just snuck on over, I guess. That's awesome. But, yeah, yeah, that is awesome, but... Yeah, I don't see why that's like such a huge deal. You know, right. Like, especially if you don't see his face. Then, right. Yeah. You know, just just let the man have his fun. Maybe I like maybe he says something because there's a couple of stories that uh, say something. I don't know. Yeah, but, but yeah. <clears throat> but I mean, fuck. If I was, you know, I don't even like Star Wars. But if I was, you know, right next door to the studio and I had the chance to be a stormtrooper, right? Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> or an Ewok. I could definitely pull off Ewok. Yeah. I would love to be an Ewok. <laughs> Yub nub. You're really good. <laughs> and I know how to murder stormtroopers. Yeah, with giant sticks. <laughs> yep. On, on ropes. <laughs> and rocks, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was good. It was very good. I, I would like to see it again. How, how was, uh, your, 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 uh, you and I have a thing in common in which we do not enjoy going to movie theaters. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm not usually a fan of that. Yeah. Uh, I think I've, I can suppress it more than you can sometimes, but but you rarely, rarely ever go to yeah. the movies. Yeah. So, you, so how was you, your usually, experience? Well, usually if I go, I try to go like on a Monday or Tuesday morning. And I, I, I waited a week and a half after <laughs> Star Wars came out, and right. I went on a Monday at like one fifty. Yeah. And I went with Kathleen, and it was almost impossible for us to find two seats next to each other. Wow. It's like we had to actually ask somebody to move over one. Uh, because there was like two empty spots. We're like, hey, is there any way? Because he was by himself. So, right. So it was insanely crowded. Even on a Monday afternoon. On a Monday afternoon, yeah. like a week and a half after. Yeah. But it, it was all right. Um, I, mean, I guess it is Christmas break, so a lot of college yeah. students are out. But still. Well, this was like, yeah, this was like the Monday before New Year's. So right. it was like, we figured maybe people be back in school maybe no, but they, they yeah the, the, the whole the whole two weeks yeah. but yeah, yeah it was it was cool though everybody was pretty well behaved and like i didn't hear anybody talk nobody clapped nobody used their cell phones so, i mean it was it was no, pretty nobody good Nobody just shouted out obvious things that were happening no, on the screen no. as they happened no i think the guy next to me checked his phone twice so i saw the little light light up but right. he didn't like text anybody or anything right, just, right. so it, it wasn't too bad yeah Sometimes you gotta check the time. Yeah. And, like, insanely, we got the, like, the two empty seats were in the very back row, the top row, which is my absolute favorite place to sit. Right. So, like, I was like, well, that's pretty weird and lucky because when I walked in, I was like, oh shit, we're gonna have to sit in the, like, little front section. Right. Um, but, but, I mean, we got there, like, half an hour before it started to. But, but yeah, we actually found two seats in the very back row, so I was, like, pretty stoked that's about that. It's also my favorite place to sit in the movie theater. Yeah. yeah. Because it uh, lessens the assholes around you. It it fifty percent it. Yeah, you know. Yep. Like that's why I like it. Yep. Like there's nobody behind you. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so it was cool. It was and cool. also you can see better. Mm-hmm. You don't have to really strain your neck. You know, actually, there were two other seats that were right next to each other, and it's like when you're walking up the stairwell. Um, there's like behind the wall. Behind the wall, yeah. So like, I was like, oh, here's two seats, and we sat down, and uh, and like. I immediately noticed the very bottom of the screen was kind of obscured for me. Right. And I like, I looked over at Kathleen, who's like two feet shorter than me. Sure. And she, she was like, she's like, I cannot even see the screen at all. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's too bad. Okay. So we, we had to find another spot. Uh, I think I saw Iron Man 2 the week after the opening weekend on a Friday night. And, uh, the only place that, uh, me and, uh, my, my friend could sit was, like, pretty much in, like, one of those spots. Right. So it kind of sucked. Why yeah. is that wall, like, a foot shorter? Uh, yeah, I don't know. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. To me. Yeah. It's not, like, a load-bearing wall. Nope. It's, like, but it's, like, 
Yeah, it's like chin level <laughs> with you. Yep. And I'm not a short guy, but I mean, I couldn't really see it. Right. So I wouldn't have wanted to sit there either. Yeah. It's still a better seat than a front row in the corner. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Uh, which is where I saw Return of the King. It's where I saw Hellboy. Yeah. It was a screener, so it was like packed. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I saw Return of the King with my girlfriend and my mom. And uh, neither of us could sit with each other at all. Yeah. Like, the, there were not three available seats together at all. And, like, you know... Like, nobody could move because just it was that packed. Right. And so, being the gentleman that I sometimes am, <laughs> uh, I allowed my mom and my girlfriend to, to sit in places where they could see the movie comfortably, and I took the very far front row. The, wor- the worst spot. Yep. I, you know, honestly, <clears throat> honestly don't really mind not sitting. Like, I like it wouldn't have bothered me at all if, like, we had to sit in different rows in right. Star Wars. The only thing that I like, because I don't want to talk to anybody during the movie, yeah. like 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 friend or foe, I don't want to talk to you yeah, when the movie's on. Exactly. Um, you but, paid for a movie, right? <laughs> Except for there is the advantage of the occasional free snack. Sure. Like, and if your friend has popcorn right, or, right. or you have candy and you can trade or whatever, yeah. That's the only thing I like about sitting next to somebody right. that I know in the theater. Because I've been to the movies with friends who don't mind talking during the movie. Or like they're like little things. Like they're like, "Hey, that was really cool." Right. And I'm just like, "Uh, shut up." Yeah. 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 yeah no. Yeah. I'm one thousand percent with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not a big fan of people talking during movies myself. Like even at the house, right? Yeah. 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 Like yeah. Uh, during Christmas, I watched a couple movies with my parents, and and they. They weren't too bad this time, but I have been with them while we've been watching movies, and they will talk, like, while the movie's going yeah. on. Yeah. Like, shut up. Yeah. I don't mind if it's like, hey, you want to watch, you know, Alien for the 70th time? Right, yeah. You know, we can be like, hey, that's really cool. I like his hat. Sure, you know, right, But, yeah. but you know. Something you've never seen before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah first time viewing, I don't want anybody yeah. to talk. Uh, well, that's cool. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, so, so... You, you didn't have anything spoiled for you before. Nothing major. Yeah, yeah just kind of tiny little quotes and things like right. that. So, so, yeah. so it's pretty good that you managed to. to it's escape kind of from kind that. of amazing working at a comic shop for a week and a half. Right. Like I was working like full time, like hours covering for people and stuff. So I was there a lot. Yeah. And somehow avoided. We did have a sign on the door that said "No Star Wars spoilers, please." Right. So that's. Yeah. It doesn't. Didn't. It's a 50 50 chance that it, that even works. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. yeah. I, I had, like, two of the people that did spoil little quotes mentioned seeing the sign on the store right. door before they spoiled, spoiled something. something. Yeah. And you're like, huh. Okay. <laughs> so, again, it goes back to your Darth Maul story about Phantom Menace. Right. Yeah. Sometimes people just, they're so excited. Right. You know? I get it. Excuse me. I get it. I'm, I don't think it's so much an excitement as just a uh, social unawareness. Yeah. <laughs> like, ooh, ooh, here's what I know right, yeah. about this thing. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to know what you know about this thing. Right. Well, here's what I know anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got to get it out. It's yeah. already working its way down the pipes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. So, And then uh, lived up to the hype. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was probably better than I expected just because I had... Purposely tried to lower my expectations. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was like, "Well, some of the things in the trailer," because I saw the very first teaser trailer. That's all I really watched. Right. And I was like, "I was like, some of it looks cool, but right, you, you know, know, you never." Hey, know. you know what? The trailer for Phantom Menace also looked cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of the purpose of trailers to make things look cool. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> At least post nineteen eighty five. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> before then, that's true. Trailers were kind of awful. Well, before then, the purpose of the trailer was to tell you the entire movie in five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> like, so you don't need to see it. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so it was very good, and it was a, and it was a good theater experience. So it was yeah, I was happy. So uh, where does it fall in the ranking of Star Wars movies for you? You know, I would definitely put it in the number four slot. Yeah. Um, like it's it's hard to battle nostalgia though. It's true. Like it's probably better than. It's probably better than, <laughs> maybe yeah. all of them. I don't yeah. know. But yeah, Jedi is my favorite by far. Right. And then and then and then New Hope and then Empire and then Force Awakens. Really, you put uh, Empire in the three slot. Oh yeah, yeah. That's 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 surprising. I I love it, but it's like my 
third favorite Star Wars thing I love. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. Usually, you know, uh, everybody's favorite is uh, Empire for the most part. And, which is weird to me. Like, I know some people like the downer ending right, or whatever, right. but, like, it's my least favorite ending of any of the movies. Um, yeah. There's no Ewoks. Uh, <laughs> so, it's, uh, yeah, I like New Hope better just because you're introduced to all the characters. Right. Um, like, I always like introduction stuff, like, like movies where you're like, uh, I know you're all big about um, making sure you know the origins of, of everything and <laughs> right? how everything works. <laughs> and so, so you love the prequels. Because they talk about midichlorians. Because it's all about introducing the entire world. Yeah. <laughs> even though you've already seen it. I, I like, I like, times by that point. I like, I like soft introductions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like midichlorian introductions. <laughs> <laughs> But I'll definitely watch it some more, and who knows? Maybe it'll start to outshine Ooh, some of the originals because yeah. it's really good. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. With my, 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 I wouldn't say distaste, but my disinterest in Star Wars is is probably famous at yeah. this point. But uh, you know, I have seen the original three, you know, and then I saw Phantom Menace when it came out. Uh. But, you know, I think from a pure nostalgia point, you know, Jedi is probably, in my opinion, the best one. Yeah. Because I saw that one. It was age appropriate. Yeah. Like, it was, what, four or whatever when that movie came out. And my mom took me to the theater to see it. And it was amazing. Yeah. Uh, And then I never saw Star Wars or Empire until I was, like, 16. So, you know, by that point, everything had kind of, you know, faded. The hype. Yeah. Right. And then, uh... You know, I never really had Star Wars toys or anything as a kid, so, like, Star Wars in my life was not a thing. Right. Whereas, I think almost every single person I knew was just, like, Star oh, yeah. Wars. Oh, I had Boba Fett under Ruse. Right. Like, yeah, I was all about it. I still have Star Wars underwear. Right, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I almost wore it to the movie, and I was like, "Is that like wearing a Slayer shirt to a Slayer concert?" Like, uh, like it's no. only in, only I would know because you know? only you would know. Yeah, so, yeah. Hopefully, right? Right. I mean, hopefully, yeah. only I would know. Yeah. Um, hopefully, there's no situation where your pants all we're all right. depantsed in the theater. Yeah, right, right. So, the terrorists. I mean, know? it happens occasionally. Yeah. You know? I mean, I've been lucky enough to avoid that every time <laughs> I go to the theater, but you know. But it'll happen. It'll, yeah. yeah. Your I mean, number will be drawn eventually. I've I've heard the stories. Mm-hmm. This is all I'm saying. Oh yeah. Isn't that what happened at the Dark Knight Returns? Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Like uh-huh. the guy came in and took everybody's pants off. Yep. That's ter- exactly it's what terrible. happened. Yep. It's terrible. It's a national Obama's. Thanks, Obama. Yeah, it's his fault. <laughs> well, well, hopefully the next time I watch a movie, it'll be. Even uh, more of a pleasant experience because it should just be you and I. All right. I, I guess. Yeah, I would uh, assume unless so. we have a surprise guest. But I'm not planning on any. Because uh, because it's about time for us to watch a movie. It is now. So this is the first episode of Gutter Trash we've recorded in the Gutter Trash headquarters, and oh yeah, uh, it's a couple of weeks here. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, which I, I tried to fool you all with the fake opening. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you did that. Yeah, I, I thought yeah, your voice yeah. was. It's because I had forgotten how to do the proper <laughs> greeting. Oh, yeah, we're back in the studio. We are yeah. back in the studio, so hopefully this will also be in the, in the another studio watch. But if not, no big deal. Yeah. Well, we'll figure it out. As yeah. long as Edna behaves. Yeah, yeah. My, my dog's been kind of rambunctious, and my mother's been very sick, right, so, so. I, that's not a good combo when, no, when right. I'm not around. But, uh, yeah, so uh, we're, we're going to watch a movie, I hope, somewhere. Yeah, okay. it's called uh, He Never Died. I don't know what that is. <laughs> It's a, uh, I believe that's what it's called. Um, it's it's a film starring uh, our friend Henry Rollins. He is our friend. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't hang out with us much anymore. No, uh, not got- after after he quit Hagen Dazs and hooked up with those black flaggers. We just never really see him anymore. <laughs> he He's did. got a little too big for his britches. He just got in that van and yeah. left. Oh, look at me with my tattoos and my no shoes. Look at all my muscles. Yeah. (laughs) He doesn't remember us. 
Hmm? He doesn't remember us. Nope. Unless, you know, maybe one of those tattoos is, is us. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've never been able to say There's so clearly many. what all his tattoos right. are. Yeah. I think 80% of them are the Misfit Skull right, and yeah. the other 20% are the Black Flag Bars. <laughs> well, maybe uh, maybe one of those Misfit Skulls is like our faces sort of combined. To oh, like a Rorschach? Like a, kind of, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or like that thing where it's like a lamp, but it's also two people about to kiss. Exactly, yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's us, <laughs> but it's also the Crimson Ghost. <laughs> so the Crimson Ghost, or if you look at it, it's us about to kiss. Exactly. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and Lord knows he has had many opportunities to get that picture for reference. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, every Valentine's Day, every Groundhog's Day. You know? yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's what I prefer. Going yeah. Groundhog yeah. Day. <laughs> uh, I wish we were friends with Henry Allen's. I wish we were too. He's great. Yeah. I've, I've email corresponded with him before. See, that's cool. Yeah. And then he was uh, very curt and blunt, but also very courteous. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. That seems right. Yeah. You know? Yep. Oh, yeah, I, I love I love the man, but I'm sure we'll get into that. No, oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, especially if the movie sucks, so we'll just try to... <laughs> Talk about him instead. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But hopefully it won't. We don't know. Yeah, it's, I think it's the first film he, he starred in. Right. That I know of, at least, so... Yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, yeah, he's been in a lot of movies, oh, yeah. but definitely not as the... Like he's the main villain right. character, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we'll see how well this compares to his work in, uh, you know, let's say a Johnny Mnemonic. Or, or oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> or a Lost Highway. Yeah, or or The Chase. Oh, that's right. Although, yeah. you know what? He's got a really big role in The Chase. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the Charlie Sheen movie mm-hmm. where, uh, they're chasing him on the highway. Uh, he's, I would say probably one of the, like the top five oh, main really? actors in that movie. I don't think I've ever seen that one. Yeah. Uh, he plays a cop who is chasing after Charlie Sheen's character and he is on a cops like television show. Oh, cool. So okay. like they cut to him a lot, <laughs> you know, like talking about what they're doing and like chasing after this guy. And so, yeah, he's, he's definitely yeah, up okay. there on that one. I might have to watch that sometime. It's, I'm sure it's terrible, but... It's not too terrible. Really? Yep. I mean, you know, if you just get past uh, the inherent smug and awfulness of uh, Charlie Sheen. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah, that's the part that I'm thinking would yeah. be terrible. Uh, but, you know, I mean, Henry Rollins is in it, and uh, Anthony Kiedis, and Flea. Maybe I have seen that. That sounds familiar, too. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Unless I'm just thinking of like a video for Higher Ground or something. Could be. Because they were both on that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but was Zero Mustel's son in it? Yeah, probably, okay. probably not. Yeah. Do you know who Zero Mustel is? Mm. Is uh, Fiddler on the Roof is probably his his biggest. Uh, Zero. Zero. It's yeah. yeah. a neat name. Yeah. But his son Josh Mustel was in the chase hmm. with Henry Rollins as Henry as Rollins' a, partner as a cop. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Henry is is really adept at playing a cop. Like, yeah, he's 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 he probably does that voice a lot in his uh, like stand up or his spoken oh, word. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he probably does he's, a cop voice. He he's got a cop look about him. Oh yeah, I mean, very disciplined and disciplined and meathead looking, right. and, and you know, with the the buzz cut. I mean, he's very smart and, and, and not meatheadish, right. but, yeah. you know. But you could easily be oh, fooled. Yep, yep. He he definitely looks like he could play a type. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see if he does or not. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. He yeah. never died. He never died. So, and hopefully he never does. But I, he will eventually. Nah, but, uh, I mean, we, we just lost Lemmy uh, this past week, so, I mean... Mm. It just goes to show you that uh, no matter how healthy you live and, yeah. and how well you take care of yourself, that uh, even it, death could come for you at any wow. moment. And no one saw that. Comment. Nope. Really? Ace of spades. Yeah. There <laughs> <laughs> uh, was actually uh, on Facebook, I saw somebody post uh, uh, a uh, status from uh, Doug Bradley. Oh, yeah, the uh, pinhead. Pinhead from the Hellraiser movies. I guess uh, he was in a Motorhead video as Pinhead. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, there's a Motorhead song called Hellraiser. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so they did a video for that, and he said that uh, 
you know, he, he was he himself is not a huge Motorhead fan or anything like that, but uh, he, he was in this video, and they said there's a scene where it's just uh, him and uh, Lemmy, you know, sitting across the table from each other. That's awesome. And you know, he said that you know, just due to whatever, like it took like a very long time for them to actually like film the scene, so they were basically just sort of sitting around and talking. And he said he was, uh, you know, just sipping on water while Lemmy was uh, downing an entire bottle of whiskey <clears throat> and God knows what else. Right. Uh, but he said he was the most pleasant man that he has ever spoken to in his entire life. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Bradley said that? Yep. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he always seems nice. Like, we watched one of those, uh, what are those making of? Oh, uh. Like, it wasn't, like, it classic wasn't a- album kind of thing that was it yeah classic albums and yeah they were talking about where they basically dissect like every song on the album they mm-hmm. did uh, ace of spades yeah and he was, seemed very affable he was oh, yeah. interesting and nice and pleasant it's definitely one of the best ones i watched yeah because because again he was so uh you know open and kind of funny and, yeah uh, they had uh, phil taylor with him you know, and they were both just joking and, and fucking around, and it was, like, really awesome. Yeah. It was like, you could tell that, like, even though Phil was not in the band, you know, after that album, I think, or for not that long after that album. Right. Like, they just, you could tell that there was, like, no bad blood between them, and they, they still were, like, friends. It wasn't forced, yeah. They, right, they yeah. seemed like they were just having a good time. Uh, and there's, uh, you can find it on YouTube, because I know when Phil Taylor died, like, a month ago. Uh, I posted it on my Facebook page. There's a YouTube video from that show where they play, I want to say Taste of Spades, or maybe We Are the Road Crew, I'm not sure. Uh, but like, they don't do any of the vocals, they just do the, the instruments. And so it's Lemmy and Phil, like, you know, together playing, and then they like hologram in, you know, uh, Fast Eddie Clark. Oh, wow. uh, On guitar, you know, and so they're, but they're basically all playing the song, and it's, Fucking amazing. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Wonder why there's no vocals. Uh, just Lemmy wasn't singing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Just playing the, the music part yeah. of it. But, like, they play, like, the whole song with just the music, and it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Like, I was never a huge Motorhead fan. Right. Like, I, I owned one of their best ofs for a few years, and I just, I was like, eh, I like Ace of Spades, but right. Eat the Rich is cool. That's, uh, Orgasm Sean. Right. But that's about it. But yeah, yeah, he was a cool guy. Yeah. Seemed, seemed like a cool guy. Uh, I love me some Motorhead. So, uh, you know, it was yeah, a little sad, but also, you know, it bound to happen. It was, yeah. Like, yeah, the, like yeah. you said, he probably lived twice as long as he probably should have. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. And I don't mean, like, as the world deserved. I mean, no, right. as, as, like, his lifestyle. Yeah. 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 As, as it warranted. Yeah. 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 Pretty cool. Pretty Still, cool yeah. R.I.P. Lemmy. Yeah. Yeah, this brews for you. Yeah. I should go brew some coffee. I should uh, go uh, bruise some... Bruise an apple? Apple, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he never died next week. He never died. Thank you for listening to Gutter Trash. You can subscribe to the show from guttertrash.net or from iTunes and leave us a review. Visit guttertrash.net for email information and for other podcasts and websites in the Gutter Trash Network. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Gutter Trash.